On this LWML Sunday, our Old Testament reading is from Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for, for your help, and you will not hear, or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity, and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson today comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is, un he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me, and the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel for, recorded for us this day is from the 17th chapter of Luke. And he said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted, and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. 
Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and recline at table? Will he not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, in of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We call the children forward for the children's message. Here they come. All right. Oop. Hi, guys. Everybody had a good weekend so far? Yeah? I had a pretty good weekend. I was given something this weekend. Many of you don't know this, but I do something called medieval reenactments. I belong to a group called the Society for Creative Anachronism, and we do a lot of medieval things. And one of the things is we get um, for service or for effort or for showing that we're really good at a skill, sometimes they give us something, things. Well, I was made a baron this past weekend. So I get one of these now. What do you think? Is it a good look? Yeah. Yeah, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and, and you have to curtsy now in the hall and call me your excellency and stuff. <laughs> okay, they're not so excited about that part. But a friend of mine made me this. So it's official. I got this really cool um, thing that was hand illuminated for me by a friend of mine. Illuminated means that he, he did the colors and he did all the, all the script work for me to, to tell me that, I was, that I'm now a baron. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? Get, whoop, guess what? Mr. Carter, sit down. Yeah, Mr. Carter, okay. Or else, no nap time. <laughs> yeah, I'd ask Mom for a vote on that one. <laughs> anyway, you guys are Funny. Okay. Well, anyway, I got a bigger award. I'm funny? Yeah, thanks. Um, I got a bigger award on Thanksgiving Day, 1954, way back at the dawn of time. Okay? And um, I was baptized. Yeah, because you're big. Well, that's one reason. Okay, the other one is I like groceries. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I was given a crown on Thanksgiving Day in uh, uh, November 1954. 
And that's when I was baptized into the family of God. And I didn't just get to be part of the thing. I, I got to be a king's kid. Yeah, and I am so. And you guys are too when you're baptized. How about that? What do you think? Everybody here baptized? I am. I. Yeah, you are. No, Trust me. Yes, you are. No. I bet mom says yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a prayer and we'll let you go back, okay? Okay. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for making us your children through baptism. And we rejoice that you give us life and breadth and, and you give us a name. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. How do you follow that up? I don't know now. Okay. Well, anyway, the gospel lesson for today is one of those that you could like preach on, you know, and have an hour and a half long sermon. But we've got things to do, so we're going to limit it. And what we like to, do, what pastors do that generally get this, get this text is, you know, we kind of divide it up, and we'll do one part one year, and we'll do one part another year. So I'm going to focus on verses 5 and 6 and how they relate to the opening verses in the chapter, verses 1 to 4. And verses 5 and 6 are, And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. That's our text. Well, Today is LW Mel Sunday, and um, I don't have anything purple on, but there are ladies that are running around church and some of their spouses that, that will have purple attire on today to remind you that, that there's a service organization that's been a part of our church for a very, very, very long time. And the thing about the ladies is they have made do with very little other than a coffee pot and a little cardboard box for decades okay and if you go and, and I don't even know if they still had this picture available but the the it's kind of funny there was a picture one time of uh, some of the first LW male women at a convention in Chicago and it was back when a time when when people were told not to smile for the camera so they look like a bunch of angry German women. It's just hilarious, okay? But, but they got their purses and their little flowered hat and their gloves and they're standing there, you know, like that. And, and I think it's maybe because they counted and they didn't get enough in their mite boxes that Sunday. But, you know, so. Um, but it, it, it's really kind of funny because so much of what's done in the church is little, are the little things. And they make all the difference in the world, don't they? Just a greeting, a smile, a name tag, things like that, that just kind of help to draw us in and be closer to God. Uh, it's very, very common things. And, and our Lord kind of set the stage for that, didn't he? Um, very, very simple things. A hay box, a cross, water, bread, wine, just the basics, basics of life. So he's teaching his disciples, okay? And he's telling them, you know, uh, what it means to be a follower. And then he throws them this curve. In the opening verses of the chapter, it's all about forgiveness. And it's interesting because he says, for habitual sin, you have to be a habitual forgiver. And what's their response? Lord, increase our faith. Finally, somebody in the Bible admits that they do not have the skill set necessary to do what God's asking them. We're not forgiving people. Humankind, are, they just don't forgive well. It's not a natural response. The natural response to having somebody sin against you in the biblical sense or, or do something that isn't, that's kind of offensive, especially in this day and age, 
is to get mad, to walk away, to break relationship, to do everything possible to destroy any good that was there. That's the worst. The be- the, at the best, people walk away and, and they just don't engage anymore. That's extremely destructive. And Jesus was trying to help the disciples to understand that being a Christian is based on relationship. The problem is relationships are between human beings. And we get wrapped around the axle about stuff. And we make mistakes. And that's kind of covered with a layer of you've offended me, you've hurt me, and now I don't want to engage you anymore. That's not biblical. Okay? What does the world tell you? Don't be a doormat. Granted, there are occasions and relationships where that is appropriate an appropriate response. But before you do that, you go out of your way to see if it can be mended. And it's a small thing, isn't it? The disciples respond with, increase our faith. They get it. At that point in time, Jesus' followers were actually spot on. The only way to do this properly was to focus on God. And he's telling them, you have in you what I've given you, and you can do this. And it doesn't take a lot. If you've ever seen a mustard seed, it's almost a dust mite. It's incredibly tiny. And Jesus says, that's all it takes. A mulberry tree, by the same token, in comparison to the mustard seed, is quite a large object. How come we can't do that? Why can't we put aside our pride, our sense of self-importance, the things that we think are important to us and the things that we value. And why can't we germinate that seed of faith? It's because we're broken too. We've been taught by the world that the only way to be in the world is to be top dog. To be aggressive. To protect your territory. To take those little offenses and add them up and really stick it to that other individual. It's all about breakage and not being engaged. And it's harmful. And it's a horrible witness. It's just a little thing, isn't it? A kind word, a look, a touch, a willingness to reconcile, to engage to be countercultural with what the world teaches is what we're called into. And Jesus tells us in his word, I'm not going to let you just kind of struggle with this. It's a gift from God to us. It's part of our sacramental heritage. It's part of our biblical knowledge. It's an ingrained part of our calling by the Holy Spirit that when Jesus died and forgave the world, the unforgivable, when he arose again and conquered that lack of forgiveness and that sinfulness, that he invited us in as his children to be like-minded and like-active, to really, really, really make a difference to the people around us. That instead of constantly being offended, that instead of constantly being hurt, that in ca- instead of constantly tearing apart, that we take a moment and we take a breath and we realize that the person sitting across from us, standing across from us, walking away from us is a fellow redeemed child of God. 
and desperate to hear that comforting word of forgiveness and reconciliation. Does everybody respond well? No. As a matter of fact, some of them are so wounded and hurt that they continue to walk away and will go out of their way to lie, to misrepresent, to attack back. But we're not called to respond that way. Even to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we are to always go to them and seek reconciliation. That's what Christ does, what he examples for us. And it's such a little thing, but it is such a refreshment. And it builds up the body. Is it easy? Eh, no. Our gut level reaction? Boy, oh boy, we're not forgiving. Boy, oh boy, we want to be on top of that. We want to win that argument at all costs. We want to we want to share and, and let the world know that we're right. Maybe we are. Maybe we are. But Jesus tells us that when he calls us to be his children, he calls us to be reconciling individuals that embrace the broken, build up those that are struggling, to engage those that are disengaged, to hold hands, to comfort, to be a solace. Even if we're rejected. That's that seven times stuff. And that's not easy. If you do the math, it's really only 49 times. So when you hit to 50, apparently all bets are off. But in the Hebrew culture, anything more than seven was considered an incredibly large number. And so when Jesus goes 70 times seven, or seven times seven as he does a couple of different places, he takes that number and he does what I call Hebrew infinity to remind us that it just doesn't stop. That we're always to look for the best the brightest, and that's that little bitty kernel of redemption, even in the most hideous of engagements. Boy, that's not easy, is it? It really and truly isn't. It takes a big faith, and we don't have that. Not on our own. That's why he says, I'm going to give that to you too. That's why we refresh and we engage in communion Bible study, prayer, because that's where we get fed to be able to do this stuff because on our own, we can't. The ladies are leading the charge today. They're helping with worship. They're, they're doing all sorts of things that today that they normally don't do. And you want, you, I will bet you dollars to donuts, including a fresh box of hot Krispy Kremes, that somebody's going to be irritated that they are. And they're going to come at me. Or one of you. And they're going to be upset and horrified. You know what? Love them. Love them. There's something else going on, I guarantee it. And we need to remember that when we're dealing with the people around us. Because some days it's our turn, isn't it? We're not at our best. We're hurting. And we come at the world sideways. And we need that little bit of grace too. It's a give and take. It's an act of mercy. It's what God demonstrates to us and he calls us into that every single day to take those little acts of kindness and turn them into big, big things. Sort of like mite boxes and coffee hour and stuff like that. So, thank the ladies today when you see them in their purple stuff. Thank them for showing us how to do mission work with little things because it's those things that teach us how to engage the big things. In our Lord's name, amen.
And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds forever in Christ Jesus.